the beginning of your career. And I know, I know you were born in Dallas, Texas, about 30 something years ago, to give away your age a little bit, yeah. but because you had been in the business for a while. Yeah. Um, and you are one of the top tier uh, performers in the adult industry. Tell, tell us how that happened. How did you get from Dallas to Shreveport Hustler Club to start your career? Uh, well, really, I danced in Dallas since I was 18 years old, and we had a political figure, I'll be nice, we had a political figure that got caught leaving one of the adult clubs, oh, wow. drinking and driving, and lipstick on his collar, and various things, and it took our industry in Dallas by storm. It, it really hurt us because they basically attacked us there and we we got the punishment for him leaving. And So a high profile industry. Dallas politician. Yeah, and, um, or at least a husband. Oh, husband. okay. And um, it, it rained down on us really, really hard. So I went in a matter of you know, a year to making less than half of what I was used to because there was constantly undercover cops in there and vice and everything. And I'm all for that being in there and um, taking care of illegal acts that are happening. What I do have a problem with is somebody tipping a girl on the stage and uh, because it's not put in her garter and she may take it with her boobs right. by taking it out of right. his hands or maybe he has it in his mouth and she takes it out of his mouth with her mouth right. or you know and we're talking a two second interaction here but these girls were getting popped with felony charges for solicitation of prostitution for doing that wow. these girls were not propositioning these men to go to a hotel and have sex with them you know or even up to the VIP room or anything like that and it made it really hard because we became scared to even do our job and perform because what if there's an undercover cop and what if he has a stigma against that girl for some reason and nothing like that of that sort happened we're still off the legal fees to fight it right it's you know we have to prove our innocence and once you get a charge like that you're not allowed to come back so how far into when you were in dallas how many years until that happened I had a good, I, I believe my timeline was about three years before that happened. Where so you were I was about in like heyday. 19, 20, 21 about then then? Yeah, I was making heyday money. I was like, woohoo, like this is great, you know, and then that happened and it cut less than half. I mean, there were times where I was walking home on a Friday night going, or not walking home, but driving home and going, why am I doing this? <laughs> Why am I doing this? There right. has to be something better. Right. And I heard about Shreveport. I heard that um, it was around all the casinos. I heard that the laws were very strict here, but because they had always been strict, right. there never was a time where they weren't strict, that that's what everybody was accustomed, cu accustomed to here. And so apparently the money was still good here. And so I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And I kind of let it sit for a while because I'm thinking, how in the world could the laws be even stricter but I'm going to make more money? Well, here's how strict you know? they were back in the day. When I started at 99X 22 years ago, I've been with the station for 22 years now. I'm uh -huh. celebrating my 22nd anniversary next. When you went to um, a strip club, you had to put the dollar bill on a clip on a stick and they had chicken wire around the dance floor. Uh -huh. And you could not touch the dancers. You had to put the dollar bill on the stick and hand it to the dancer. Seriously, you talk about strict. Now it got a lot looser when, you, when the Shreveport Hustler Club opened up. By then, it had loosened up a little bit to where you could actually touch someone. But back when I started, 22 years ago, when I went out to the strip clubs downtown, you had to hand, you had to put your dollar bill on a stick and hand it to them over the chicken wire. Now that's strict. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that is. That so is. when you got to Shreveport, you were about 21, 22. Um, how long were you in Shreveport at the Hustler Club? I mean, because that's, you said you got your start, you got your start in Dallas, really. But yeah. this is where it sort of took off in Shreveport, because right. somebody maybe found you here? Yes, okay, yeah. So tell me that story. I was here for maybe a smidge over a year. Um, and there was a male talent, and he also, I guess, would be considered director because he held camera and stuff like that uh, for Shane's World, um, which is a production company in California. 
but his hometown was here in Shreveport, and it was around Christmas time, and the club was hurting for girls, because, right, everybody's gone for the holidays. They're like, come in, you know? <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, okay, I wouldn't normally, you know, dance at this time, but right, I'll come in. Well, he had brought his cousin in. He was in from out of town to visit his family. It's the only reason he was here. Wow. And they wanted to get out and get away, and so they came to Hustler and um, saw me on main stage, and... Uh, I can't say exactly what he said on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> on the radio? Um, yeah, like, uh, basically, I was on the main stage, and he was, like, in the seating area, and he screamed, that girl's bleep is going to make money in porn. Wow. And I remember looking at him and going, what an idiot. <laughs> who is this guy? Like, who does that? Right. You know, and um, and he was like a military guy, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, just real, real buff, you know, and just, I'm looking at him like this idiot, you know, and ignored it. And for the rest of the night, he's kind of, you know, following me around and he just had to talk to me and I was just like, okay, leave me alone. Like, my time is money. So right. If you want my time, you know how to make that happen. Exactly, <laughs> you exactly. Know? Pretty simple. And um, finally, he came to me, he's like, I have to talk to you. And I'm like, it's $20 a song. It's real simple. There's the room where we go, you know? <laughs> right. So he said, okay. He handed me 100 bucks, and I went to give him a lap dance. He goes, no, 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 no. I have a lot to talk to you about. Just sit down. And he gave me his whole spill about the porn industry. And, of course, I'm used to hearing everything under the sun, so I still didn't believe him. I right. thought he was an idiot. Right. He's like, okay, yeah, whatever, dude. And I went on about my way, and he was like, you don't have anything to say? And I was like, well, not unless you have another $100, <laughs> you know? And um, I kind of went on my way, and somehow, you know, I had a girlfriend of mine, and it came about that, you know, between talking with her, never, I had this rule, I never leave with customers and go to IHOP or Denny's or breakfast Very or smart. anything. Very smart. Um, and really more around a safety issue. Right. It's like, this is my job. This isn't fun and games, right? right? Like, this is my job. I can have fun there. And um, it, it, it comes about that uh, I give in and say, okay, we'll go together to IHOP with you and your cousin. I think it was IHOP, maybe it was Denny's. And sat there, and I thought it was going to be this whole pickup scene of just wanting to. I'll get put on you the in films. Come home with me, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Well, he actually sat down and kind of proved that he really was. Who, I mean, he said he showed kind of documentation and you know had everything kind of laid out. Was like ready for the pitch, and right. I was like, oh, like this guy's serious. Wow. Now, a little bit of backstory. Um, another reason why it was easy for me to come here is I was in a relationship and my boyfriend passed away on a motorcycle ride. Oh, wow. And I was wrapped in all kinds of memories in Dallas because we frequented strip clubs, even though I worked at one, we frequented them often. I loved to go there and tip other girls and stuff, even on my nights off, and he would go with me. And when he died, all of the girls were always like, oh, we're so and so. And I'd be like, I can handle this. Like, it's just a constant reminder. So it was easy to come here. Well, basically, we leave IHOP, and we're in the car, and she's like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I, I mean, I don't know, nothing. And she was like, okay, seriously? You have not dated anybody. You have not gone out. You don't do anything but work, work, work since your boyfriend died. Like, it's time to experience. Like, you know, at least have him come over and see if he's good. <laughs> you know, I mean, he is a professional. Right. And I'm thinking, yeah, okay, if anything, why not see what it's like to be with a professional? So I called him over. He was Johnny on the spot there in two seconds. <laughs> and I'll just put it this way. Um, tactfully, it was the most amazing experience I ever had. Really? And I was like, yeah. I'm thinking of, I, I really think that if this is what I can experience every day and I get paid to do this, why would I not? So, like, if I don't like it, I can always come back to right. dancing. This, this industry is always here. Right. Why not give it a shot? Go to California. Get the heck out of Dodge. You know, I have all these bad memories. I'm, I'm running away from Dallas because I don't want the bad memories. And I'm here in Shreveport and I'm driving back and forth. And I'm like, I don't have anything to lose. And, um, so how quick did it happen after that? It happened pretty fast. So I was finishing, I, uh, we were on Christmas break, so I was in college, um, and 
I, you know, because it was around Christmas, so like that that ended, and then January I had already saved up to pay for my boob job, and so I was like, well, I don't want to go out there until my boob job is, you know, final. I've already paid for it. I already have the date <laughs> scheduled and everything. And my doctor was like, you need to wait exactly two weeks on the dot before you do any kind of strenuous activity. So I'm thinking, perfect. He flew me out there the last week of January, and by February 4th, I was doing my first scene. That was, that was, you were 23 years old. Yeah, that was in 2007. February 4th, 2007 was my first So about very 10 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Almost and 11 since, now. Almost 11 years. And in those 11 years, you've been, a, you've been in, of your own movies, 75 I've read, about 75. Oh, way more than but that. But you've appeared in about 150. Is that those figures off or old? Way off. Way more than way that. Off. <laughs> so way give off. me a ballpark figure how many how many films that have been yours, like you starred in the films. Um, started the film. So I was an internet sensation. So in 2007, it was still kind of a DVD time, but it was transitioning into more internet. Right. And I became an internet sensation. So the way I would say is the most accurate to way to describe my career in the industry was I've been in over 400 scenes. Right. That's how so, they that's how they pay you too, scenes. Yeah, so it's the scene. So um, I would say DVDs, uh, you know, maybe 100, right? Okay. Um, that I've starred in. Uh, as far as being on the cover, Lord knows because they shuffle those in and out and they, I don't even know the right term. It's, it's not like refurbished, but like... <laughs> Kind of, they will re-edit a scene mm, okay. and make it look like I it's see. a brand new, but it was actually filmed six years ago, right. but it's released as if it's this brand new thing. They just re-edited it, right. you know? So I don't know how many times I've been recirculated on the cover of a DVD with something like that, but as far as an actual scene, you know, paid to go up on set and perform, that's over 400 times wow. in 11 years. Again, we're with Rachel Starr. Uh, star, she is a star here, uh, here in Shreveport. She got her start in Shreveport, adult film star. And you've done some TV, right? Did I read that too? You've done a couple of TV, sh anything on TV? I, I thought I read something about you on TV somewhere. No? Uh, I've done a sizzle. Sizzle, a, that's it. Yeah, for yeah. a TV show. Yeah, yeah I've yeah. done that. Um, it's... So basically the company that I, I was the executive producer of it and I partnered with them on filming this whole entire, it was basically about my love life mm. and how that is being a porn star and having, trying to have a real relationship that is a normal, as normal as can be. I mean, normal is a cycle on a washing machine, right? right? But right. Um, as normal as I could have and just the things that I face in dating and you know, going on a Tinder date or whatever. Right. And so we filmed the whole thing because it was fascinating. I mean, I was blown away by some of my experiences because I was always really upfront. And I, the th experiences I had was like, you couldn't, you couldn't make it up. Right. I was like, wow, some of this is so flagrant. <laughs> you know, like, oh my gosh, these guys have got a lot of courage. <laughs> um, anyway, so... You know, we went into that whole thing, and that company went out of business before it could ever reach anything further than us going through all of the filming and editing and, you know, getting the sizzle out there, and then I partnered with the wrong company. Oh. Yeah, so I still have it. I still have all the content, but I'm not in that industry. I wouldn't even know where to start on, right. on who to send that to, but yeah, so that's what happened with that. Well, you've been... You've been in the news. I mean, a, a lot of um, adult film stars come through town and really don't hear a lot about it, except on our station, you know, and maybe a few billboards. And speaking of billboards, you you caught, it wasn't you, but it, it, there was a big controversy. I'm going to read this article. It's not very long. Okay. Thousands have signed a petition addressing Governor John Bell Edwards to remove a billboard in Shreveport promoting Larry Flint's Hoster Club. And, of course, it's your picture with your finger in the mouth. You've probably seen it. It's probably, you use that all over the country. The organizer of the Change.org petition said people and children should have the right not to expose images that include currently featured on the billboard, which shows a woman suggestively licking her finger. He says, uh, the, 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 they says, quote, I worry about buses of children who pass every day on their way to school, said Stephanie, Stephanie Gibbons. I worry about teen drivers who may be distracted by this billboard as they pass. And there was a, there was a petition with over 6,000 people that signed it sent to Governor John Bell Edwards, who, by the way, is in town today, and U.S. Senator Bill Cassidy to take action on the billboard. And I just wanted your comment, because, of course, it's free speech. 
the it wasn't like you were naked. It wasn't like you had your clothes off. What's your what's your thoughts on all this controversy that's happened here in the Bible Belt in Shreveport that's going statewide it's all over all the stations about two weeks ago? What's your thoughts on that? My thoughts is that I think it's absolutely beautiful in, in a sense of our country and the freedoms that we have. To be completely honest, because of the freedoms of people being able to hire somebody to put that picture up on a billboard and the freedoms of moms being concerned of what their children see and protecting them to be able to sign petitions down to me having the freedom to uh, express myself right. in what I think is an artistic form uh, in a suggestive manner mm -hmm. on stage or on a set is beautiful and and I don't think that that should be taken away from anybody I don't think that I should be taken down um, necessarily uh, for, I think that there's a different way that would have been more constructive that they could have gone about it, but I still respect them because anybody that is passionate about anything that they feel or believe, you go girl, like do it, or guy, whatever, like do you, like if you believe in something, stand up for it, right. fight for it, like handle your business. That's sort of what's happening with what's happened with Weinstein lately. I mean, it started a, a chain reaction. Mm -hmm. Now all these people that were groped, molested, whatever, sexual advances, are now speaking up. So you're, I mean, that sort of ties in with what you're saying. Stand up for what you believe, don't be afraid to be outspoken, but there are legal limits and there are ways to go about it correctly, right? Yeah, I think that there, you know, there's a lot of emotion involved when um, people strongly believe in something. Me, I've been doing this for 11 years and, and arguably 15. Um, I've been in an industry like this, so uh, I'm, it doesn't really have much effect on me. Right. I'm very used to it. Mm -hmm. um, I see both sides. For me, it's a picture from my neck up. Right. And what is the difference in me licking icing off of my finger to a child licking the side of an ice cream cone? Or... I mean, it would be the same motion. Right. Isn't it the meaning that you put behind the story you're telling yourself and True. others? True. It's all about perception. And if you're worried about, you know, teenagers seeing that, maybe rather than be worried about it, maybe look at it as a beautiful opportunity to open up that discussion. Exactly. To educate exactly. them about the things that they will see in this world, whether it's here in Louisiana or Texas or Singapore or wherever it is, you know, maybe we could look at this as a beautiful opportunity to open up conversations, open conversations to be had about why these things exist in the first place. Because if there wasn't a market for it, I wouldn't have a job. True. True. Let's go, I'm going to go just real quickly. I know you've had a bunch of films. Your last film, it looks like you did about four or five films in 2017. Is that about right? Did they say that one more time? They, you've had about, you've done about five films in 2017. It looks like about, the last one you did, it says, oh, released. Happy Endings number two. Is okay, that? okay, maybe maybe that's what's been released, but yes. no, I filmed way more this year okay. so far. <laughs> so, is there anything coming up that you've got on your plate right now that you're excited about, as far as another film or anything else that you're doing with your with your career in the next year or so? Um, just two weeks ago, I filmed for Bang Bros, which I haven't, which was exciting. I haven't filmed for them in two years. Um, so, I mean, that should be released any time now. Um, Brothers is hiring me to do a series. Um, we're working on the details and logistics of that. It could start filming as early as December. It might be more like January. It could be half and half between those two. So that'll be on browsers.com. Um, and then the other, I, I think the, the more exciting thing that I do have going on where most of my passion has come from and my focus has been for the last year, almost a year and a half, is my website. Right, let's go right into that because I know you have five million followers. You're saying six million followers. Almost, almost. I mean, if you add Twitter, Facebook, right. and Instagram, and Tumblr, and you know every single platform there is out there, right? And now. I was like, you've got six million followers on social media, and you don't have a website. You're like, no. I'm like, why? So you're finally doing it. Explain how to, how you're doing it, and 
I bet that that's exciting too. It is exciting, and really, your exact response is the reason why I'm doing it. For years, people are like, I just don't understand, like, why you don't have one. And really, it boiled down to the fact that um, I was so used to being hired with scripts of companies telling me what my personality should be, the role they want me to play, the lines they want me to say, and all of that. And I think I was just kind of like, well, you know, these things are fun, but I, I just have a very different sensual expression that if I was going to have my own website and it was going to be mine, I wouldn't want to do what everybody else is hiring me to do. I'd want to do what I want to do. Right. And if you go on my website, it's completely free, number one, and there is very suggestive, seductive, elegant, uh, maybe uh, mysterious, sultry kind of things on there, but are you going to find something that is raunchy and flagrant? That is not what my website is about. I mean, my tagline is uh, bringing the art and elegance back into pornography. Nice. So it is very artistic, it is very elegant, and it is very suggestive, and, and it's alluring, and it's tantalizing. Um, but more than anything, one of the things that has kind of happened through osmosis of me being in the business for 11 years is coaching. Um, people are now looking at me as an expert um, in, in that industry as far as sex or advice that I can give. Um, uh, and I'm talking down to couples or to somebody that wants a girlfriend really bad and doesn't feel like he could please her. What are some tricks and tips that I can use? Or a girl that says, you know, I've never given my boyfriend a lap dance and I want to surprise him in a French maid outfit. What do I do? Um, to a couple that has lost their fire and they're like, you know, we don't want to do anything too kinky, but, but we do want to liven this up a little bit. Can you coach us? And right. I'm like, yeah, I can do that. Right down to somebody that says, I want to get into the industry, but I want to do it the right way. I want to treat it like a business, and I don't want to get taken advantage of. I can do that, too. Right. So on my website, I would say the biggest thing on there that I'm really trying to focus on is giving a place for everyone to go that is looking for consultation, coaching, guidance, mentorship, anything like that on there. Um, I really want to bring knowledge, safe knowledge respectful knowledge, um, educated mm -hmm. knowledge uh, that awesome. is, is a safe, open environment for people to explore right. their own sexual wants, needs, and desires. So when you talk about the website, how do people go to your website? Is it rachelstar.com? It is therachelstar.com. Therachelstar.com. <laughs> yes. Therachelstar.com. Make sure you, so it's up and going? Yeah, it's up and going, and it, like I said, it's, it's, it's completely free. There's no membership. Uh, you basically would, as long as you can give me your first name and an email so an actual account and password can be created, like I, I've got to make a, you know, some, some form of, right. <laughs> you know, an account for you. Um, that way you can communicate with me. So, yeah, you would just put in, like, your first name, email, um, or your stage name and email, whatever you want it to be, and create that account, and then you have access to everything you want to see. How about your other platforms? How do people find you on Instagram, on Twitter, and, and everything else? Um, so the biggest thing I would say is there's a lot of imposters out there so make sure it has the blue check mark please make sure it has the on your website mark. do you have the links to all your other I do good, that's the main one you go to your website and you can yes. get to Twitter you can get to Facebook yes. you can get to everything else you can get to all the of official them. star yeah okay. please make sure that there's the blue check mark there's so many imposters out there recently um, my assistant uh, brought to my attention that someone had created a fake profile and was asking for money from my fans uh, for various different things. And that makes me really sad because it's fully taken advantage of the brand that I've built and taking advantage of people that I'm trying to give them a safe place to go to. So if it is not a verified account, please do not give anybody money <laughs> that is impersonating me. Please awesome. don't do that. Perfect. Rachel Starr will be at the Hustler Club tonight for one show, Thursday night, two nights, Friday, two shows Friday night, and two shows Saturday night. I think they go about 11 and 1 or somewhere in that time frame. Um, so come on out and see the star who got her start in Shreveport, really. Yeah. I mean, that's where she was found, was here in Shreveport. So yeah. let's make her feel well. Done. One last question. You're back in Shreveport. When's the last time you were here? I, oh my gosh, I was just talking to my assistant about this. Uh, it's I bet it has been, at least as far as like going downtown and in the club area, um, it's seven, eight years. 
wow. um, since I've stepped foot in the club. But as far as Shreveport, right. um, I have been here, let's see, it was 2000, I came here once last year and once the year before, but it was more Bossier City, it wasn't really like When Shreveport. you come back to Shreveport, is there any restaurant you like to go to that you can't find anywhere else or something you like to do here that you can't do anywhere else in the country? I'm so glad you mentioned that because I can't remember the name of it, but it is, it's a white tablecloth, really nice steakhouse. Um, it, it's amazing and I've been there twice. Superior? Maybe that's what it is. Off a line in Piermont? I don't know the roads, but it, it's kind of like in the shopping center yes. type thing, and it's nice. Superior Steakhouse, okay, probably. That, yeah. Awesome. Okay. I figured you might something say something Cajun-y, like, um, we got, you know, some Cajun, because I don't know if you get a lot of Cajun from, you know, out west, you know, you're not getting a lot of, are you into Cajun food at all? I am. Um, so my stepmother was actually, she lived in uh, New Orleans for 16 years, and so I grew up getting the gumbo and the you know jambalaya and the cornbread and the crawfish and all of that stuff so i figured you might say something like herbie k's because that's you know one of those hidden areas oh you remember, okay. you're going to herbie k's no i haven't they have the pounded out flat shrimp they have oh. the shrimp buster and they have the big onion rings and it's it's not really you know gumbo and all that kind of stuff but it's it's a tuck away place that the stars go it's it's a hole in the wall but it's very famous in town here wow. you might want to do that when you're in town okay. if you like shrimp yeah, yeah. Once again, Rachel Starr going to be at the Hustler Club. One show Thursday night, two shows Friday night, and two shows Saturday night. This was an awesome interview. Thank you for, for coming in and, and visiting with us here at Pontiac X. Of course. Thank you for having me. No and, problem. Um, and again, I hope I see everybody. I am a super friendly person, so even if you just want to come to the club and say hi and shake my hand, I'm happy to talk to everybody. So people don't have to give you money just to say hi and no, I maybe mean, get your autograph, but not. Yeah, I mean, if you want a picture with me, if you want, you know, a lap dance or something, of course, yeah. But if you just want to come in and show your appreciation, like, I'm really, I'm a Texas girl. I'm super friendly. and A I, Southern girl. Yeah. Yes, I'm Southern, so awesome. just come say hi. Perfect. Thank you very much. I'm Rockin' Rick. Keep listening. The Rock Station, 99X.